every videographer's nightmare is to lose his footage. In this video, I would like to share with you the steps I'm taking to backup files after a shoot. But let me give you first a scenario. You are coming back late night after a shoot of a wedding, for example, 12 hours, and you're dead tired and all you can think about is taking a shower and going to sleep. But before you do that, you decided to go over the footage. So, so you're taking the SD card out of your camera, you fit it to the SD, the SD card reader, and you're going over the files, you're happy, and you're on your way to bed. The day after that, or a few days later, you're on another gig, and you are going through the setup of the camera, and you notice that you did not format the cards. What's going through your mind is, did I backed it up? Did the footage on my computer well, I recall uh, seeing it on my computer. Well, hopefully you did not format the cards and put new ones. But if you did, you'll find out when you get home that you cannot find it anywhere on your computer. This is only one example. And this is a catastrophe for a videographer. It's one of the biggest nightmares we can go through. Now, I've been in the videography business for 15 years and made a lot of mistakes. And, you know, I went, I'm going extreme as far as, um, you know, uh, find a way to back up my footage. And I would like to share with you some of the steps. So let's start what I don't do. I don't format cards on a job. I do that at home uh, in my studio. That way, if I'm not sure if uh, it's backed up, then I'll go and check it on the computer. I don't drop footage from SD card and reuse it on a shoot. I make sure to bring plenty of SD cards. If you must do that because it's a all day long shoot, then make sure you back it up to at least two hard drives. Play those clips, at least some of the clips. Uh, but make sure you remove the SD cards out of the reader because you might play them from the SD card instead of the one that on the computer. Um, another thing is that I noticed that if there is any corrupted file, then you will not see any thumbnail. Uh, that's with my experience, but um, I'm sure there are other uh, indications. So if you, uh, if you know of any others, uh, please leave a comment below. I would like to uh, learn a bit about that. I document the entire backup, literally. The way the chart works, you will see the client's name, the date of the backup, uh, hard drive, internal and external, where the uh, footage was backed up and I marked it as zero and I'll tell you in a moment why. You will see the uh, audio devices that the uh, audio was recorded to. In this example, you'll see the Zoom, zoom 1 and Zoom 2 and you'll see their over, overall size uh, of the file. Um, then you will see the cameras and as well the uh, size of the footage. And the last one will be the total of the entire uh, shoot. Then I'll go the extra mile and I'll open new projects in Premiere, bring all the footage and the audio to Premiere. I will organize it by groups and folders. And in case there are um, maybe interview that I did that has a multiple camera, I will also sync that. When this is all done, I will copy the entire folder of the project and paste it to two external two external hard drives. Now I feel peace of mind that I have everything uh, written down and I know for sure that it's all backed up. Uh, by the way, one of the hard drives is gonna stay in my studio and the second one will be off studio. God forbid there is a flood or a fire or a burglary. Uh, now, I'm not talking about RAID configurations or NAS because this is a totally different video. This is about more steps you should take uh, after a shoot. And the, the NAS and, and RAID configuration, it's more about hardware, which I think I'll do a video about that in the future. Let's talk about long distance shoot. Let's say you're flying somewhere for a few days and you need to back up your footage. When I'm done with the shoot, the number one thing I'll do is take one of the cards out of the two slots that I have on the camera and put it in my wallet. God forbid someone's stealing the bag, I have it in my wallet. Now, from, from the location all the way to the hotel room, I will never leave the site of my bag. It's always gonna be with me, regardless if I have to do a bathroom stop or if I go to a restaurant. 
When I get to the room, I back up all the footage of the cameras and the audio devices to my smartphone. Yes, smartphone. Why? Because the smartphone is always with me. I have enough space of close to 500 gigabytes. And the plus with that, that I can upload the footage and the audio straight to Dropbox. And that usually happens overnight. So between having the uh, SD cards in my wallet, uh, all the materials are in my uh, smartphone and uh, third backup is Dropbox, I'm pretty much relaxed. Um, now, last and not least is archiving. And let me start with that. I do not archive raw footage. The only time I archive raw footage is when I work on a regular basis with a specific company. If I know it's once a year or once in a lifetime, then I will archive the final video and as well, what I'll do, I'll go to the project timeline and I will render each one of the tracks. So if I have five tracks on the timelines, I'll render solo each one of the tracks. So if in the future I have to uh, do any changes, then the music and the effects on everything are not baked in in the video. So these are the steps I'm taking to back up uh, my footage after a shoot, uh, as well uh, shoot on long distance and uh, archiving. If you have uh, other ways to do that, better ways, please leave your comment. I hope this video helps you some. Um, please don't forget to subscribe, click on the notification bell, and thumbs up if you like the video. I'll see you in the next video.